So last week I was traveling and I played Spider-Man 2. Uh, you saw that preview video I put out. If you shared that, thank you. Shout out to the hardcore Spider-Man community. But I also got to play a bunch of Alan Wake 2. I got to play like almost three hours of it and I came away with a lot to say. Also, full disclosure, when checking out this game, like I, I flew out there on my own dime. I am not under any obligations to only say good things about it. These are my honest impressions. I just genuinely happen to really like it. Cards out on the table. I, I have listed it in previous videos as one of my most anticipated games of the year. I am a big fan of Remedy Games and going into Alan Wake 2, I did have high expectations, but I also kind of knew what to expect. And I think like I 50 50 got that. There was some stuff I expected and some stuff I did not expect, but in a good way. So I got to play two whole sections. I got to play a good 90 minutes of Saga, uh, who is the new main character. She's like an FBI agent lady. Uh, and then I also got to play like an hour or so of Alan Wake section, where you play as Alan Wake in a completely different location and environment. And you can jump between these two stories uh, apparently whenever you want and pursue them and go through them at your own pace. So starting off with Saga, basically, I think the best way to describe the difference between them and, and, and how Saga stands out is that Saga's whole section feels like more traditional Alan Wake. Like it's the first one, it's spooky woods at night and you're slowly descending into this creepy town trying to solve a mystery and ghouls are coming out at night and you gotta kill them with your flashlight, right? So Saga is kind of like the Alan Wake sequel you expect where without spoiling anything, the Alan Wake sections are like sicko mode, just like crazy, weird, wild remedy shit where they're going absolutely buck wild on everything they've learned. And I mean, in terms of like stuff with like creative uh, gameplay design and scenarios from control, but also just the AV, the audio visual elements they've been kind of building up throughout the years. And it does a lot of wild and crazy shit. So at first I was like, oh, Alan Wake 2, I just want to play as Alan Wake. Uh, after spending a lot of time with Saga, I actually think it's a really good kind of back and forth point because she almost feels a little bit more like Alan in the first game where she's kind of like a normie. She has a little bit more of like human personal stakes to things. Obviously, Alan Wake is still a person, but you know, the, the story gets so bizarre and crazy that Saga is kind of like the grounding for things and it works. It also works for me as someone who loves survival horror and with them actually really going survival horror here, it straight up feels like that. Now, I, I do wanna say this is a preview, so as much as I am very positive on the game so far, it's not the whole package. I played like an earlier version and, you know, context is everything. So seeing two hour, three hours that is absolutely great, the rest of the game could drop off. Who knows? So I, I just want to put that out there, kind of set expectations, cover some things. I can only comment on what I have seen, but it is really good. And I will say in terms of how it plays, if you're wondering, it plays like a pretty good mix between old traditional Alan Wake, if you played the first one, and unabashedly like the Resident Evil 2, 3, 4 remakes, like straight up the way ADS works, the way the characters move, the way inventory and weapon swapping works. All of that feels very, very Resident Evil. I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. Uh, it does also have Remedy's kind of punchy, snappy gun combat, though, with like the aggressive sounds. That's something I really remember picking up a lot on in Control, just how mean and aggressive a lot of the guns sounded. But then you're also dealing with like the Alan Wake thing where the, the, the enemies are, are like covered in shadow and you need to break the shadow with your flashlight and do kind of like the concentrated flashlight blast. So you're still doing that. You're managing a battery. You're swapping batteries on your flashlight. Uh, like a secondary reload. So it's that coupled with like tight control and more emphasis on shooting, like a really loud, mean, aggressive shotgun. Really good gore on enemies. I saw skin chunks and pieces of enemies fly off as they get bloody and tissuey. That really makes a difference in certain shooters. Where in the first Alan Wake, you feel like you were kind of shooting or, or kind of whittling away at a shadow and then shooting a weak point. It does kind of feel like you're hitting actual flesh here. Obviously, there's a supernatural element to it, so they're a little sketchy and shadowy, but it, it kind of worked as a really good in-between. With both sections, I really like that it was like dripping in atmosphere. I've made so many videos now at this point talking about how much I care about video game woods, and I like a distinct 
moody atmospheric woods like a northeast type woods or northwest type woods that some games just really can't capture the feel of the right way and i think alan wake 2 so far from what i've seen has some good woods it might be it might be my uh game of the year winner for best woods 2023 we don't know yet for sure i don't want to make a judgment again this is a preview but good spooky woods dripping in atmosphere like good moody shit good darkness good particle effects leaves going by i i was really enjoying all that stuff and i got to essentially wa work through a town a town called watery uh which conveniently enough was flooded so it, it kind of has this like little twin peaks small town feel there's some trippy stuff going on there's some remedy universe stuff going on here but you can walk around the town talk to people do stuff but then you venture into the adventure deep into the woods through a park and then eventually you find like a small town theme park themed around coffee. I think it was called Coffee World. And it sounds bizarre, but in certain parts of America, in, in rural America, there are small business theme parks. And having been to a couple of them, this actually captured a really good feel of that. Granted, it was kind of a little bit more abandoned and at night and haunted and spooky, but one of the best things I liked is that a lot of the rides felt like real convincing rides, but also the neon light bars on the rides just shone th shine through in a really, really good way, like through a fog. Also, I did find a lot of it pretty challenging. Like enemies will smoke you in a couple of hits. And uh, I like that. And what I did notice is that between both Saga and Alan's playthrough, because in both of them, you are using guns and managing resource and survival horror gameplay, right? Uh, is that it has the good feel of survival horror tension in terms of the stress over resources. Worrying about that shit actually seems like it, it does make a difference, especially with certain enemies that will pull tricks on you. The game will pull tricks on you in little ways that I, I won't totally spoil, but essentially sometimes you'll, you'll make a decision and fire your gun or use your flashlight and then you'll go oh shit i shouldn't have wasted that oh no what am i doing and like you get flustered like the game flusters you in a good way that's survival horror and with alan's stuff again like i just full disclosure this was a really good preview like they showed a very good section of the game alan wakes new york that you're exploring it's this otherworldly noir fantasy new york where it like you're in a kind of hub city area like a like a kind of midtownish area kind of all right, all right i take that back maybe kind of kind of midtown like bryant park e but then more down towards like the Flatiron building and uh what is that madison square park like it kind of had a lot of that vibe to it but it wasn't a one-to-one -one recreation it was its own thing and it felt specifically steeped in that noir that noir that i have really enjoyed from remedy from the beginning from max Payne. you guys know i'm like a diehard Max Payne weirdo, so I'm gonna bring it up, of course. But it was the lighting, it was the mood, it was the crisp fall leaves and garbage blowing across the streets constantly, uh, like over the top neon signs and uh, TV screens in shop windows that were broadcasting like real images of the Alan Wake actor's face. They did a lot of stuff with that. They did a lot of project projection and imagery. We got to see Sam Lake's character in this, Alex Casey, uh, kind of chewing the scenery in multiple ways. And a lot of the time it was just kind of like Sam Lake's iconic silhouette with the hairdo and the coat uh, projected onto walls and kind of like figuring out this mystery. So as Alan, you're going through this New York and you're working through a mystery, but you also have, a, a you know, an artifact that is significant to the Remedy universe uh, that can essentially kind of switch realities or, or change scenes right in front of you. So you can change like a pile of garbage into a subway station and then you can go down in that subway station and then that's filled with like meta narrative and context and all types of stuff. Uh, but you're also essentially going through certain levels and figuring out stuff, not totally in the detective work way as you will with Saga, but more in a writerly way. So essentially you're walking through rooms and kind of rewriting them and organizing them and changing them to make sense. So essentially how you do that is you jump to the mind place that I talked about in a previous video where it's like this instant pause screen where all of a sudden it zips into a cozy place in the character's mind. So in Saga, with Saga, it's like you're in a log cabin and you have your uh, evidence board in front of you and like a cup of coffee and you can customize your weapons and stuff like that. And with Alan, it's a writer desk thing. So you can jump in and out of that and, and look at scenes and how they're shuffled around and change them to different scenes, like change one scene into a, a murder scene. And then all of a sudden, Alan 
Alan will be like, oh, that's not how the scene went. I need to rewrite it. And you'll just hear a typewriter, chick, 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 and the screen will flash. And then suddenly there's like police tape and blood all over the floor. And then that'll unlock different areas, trigger different story stuff. And you kind of have to sequence that all together. And I think my only complaint really is trying to wrap your head around all that. I am not a smart man, and the game does require you to do a little detective work and think critically, and it doesn't totally hold your hand, which is absolutely good, but I'll be honest, I struggled with it a little bit. It is further in the game, right, where I got to play, so it didn't essentially tutorialize and walk me through how to think through these processes. I kind of had to figure it out for myself, but once I finally got the grip on it, I was happy and I beat the demo and a lot of other colleagues I talked to like didn't finish the demo. I'm not throwing shade to anybody, but like I smoked that shit. It's all I do. I play games, so I guess that's good. But visually, uh, that was the other thing. So all the footage you've seen on screen here uh, is footage that I captured and I found myself just very slowly walking through environments panning because the lighting is really incredible, but also it's the color palette and uh, the inspiration. There's a lot of imagery there. There's a lot of references to remedy stuff, but also just movies, horror, fiction. And I think people are going to really shit their pants over some of this. I think from what I've been able to play, it feels a lot like everything Lem Remedy's learned up to this point, right? Uh, for me, it's the old style stuff they did from way back with uh, Max Payne, right? The noir, the deep New York, the scenery chewing, the eeriness, the quietness of a lot of it. Uh, and then also the audio visual stuff, the fake television shows, you know, the, the, the visuals on screen, uh, jumping to it having a lot of similar spooky elements from Alan Wake, but then also that kind of aggressive, good feeling shooting that they started to pick up with Quantum Break and really nailed home with control and then all that's all the projection all the audio visual stuff and all the complex gameplay design scenarios from control like it, it all just kind of felt like an amalgamation of, of stuff i liked about remedy games and that's that's good i mean I, again it sounds like i'm singing the praises i've only played three hours so they could whiff it the, the story could end on a downer. I don't know what the fuck could happen, but from what I've seen, I am still excited and you know, there's not too much longer until it releases. So there's not too much more I can add to the conversation until I play through the entire game. But if you were just listening, if you were just looking for something to listen to for 10 minutes and hear more about a new game, that's what I wanted to provide today. I wanted to answer as many questions as possible, talk about why I like it, but also not spoil things. And that's what's made it kind of difficult, but I will try to answer any questions you have in the comments. I can't answer everything because I haven't seen everything, but in terms of little gameplay things or something like that, maybe I can help, maybe I can provide some insight. So. Let me know what you're thinking. Let's talk about Alan Wake. I would love to know your expectations, your experience with the first one, maybe even American Nightmare. I don't know. Let's talk about this game, anything at all down in the comments. I do apologize if there's been any background noise uh, is currently like under construction around here. This is still a work in progress behind me, but thanks for bearing with me and listening to what I do. Uh, so on Game Ranks, I just do stuff. And then here, I just talk about stuff I really like and interest me. So if you're new, clicking the like button is all you gotta do. It does help me. Thank you for that. But thank you to people on Patreon and YouTube memberships who have my back. All of you, really. I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching. Subscribe because video games, pizza's on me.